Yeah, what's up everybody? It's ya boy Alarmix back here with another Apex video. I'm actually back here with another news video, even though to be honest, there's really not much real news to talk about. I mean, we are going to go over things such as the Halloween event, the Steam Switch crossplay release, and also there's some pretty other average in-game things going on. If you're a person that is up to date on the latest Apex news, I'm just going to save you some time here. You've probably already seen all of the things in this video, but if you aren't up to date on the latest Apex Legends news, I think you should enjoy. So if you are so ready for this news video without any real news in it, please hit that like button for ya boy Alarmix. Or maybe you just really want to help out ya boy Alarmix's YouTube channel and hit that like button anyways. Alrighty people, I'm Alarmix and let's get into it. So first I want to talk about the Halloween event. So given that this is a modern mainstream game with mediocre support, we can expect a Halloween event. About a month ago we got a leak from Shrugtull on what Respawn is planning on putting into the Halloween event as the LTM. So this tweet that was about a month ago read, Recent patch data shows that the Shadowfall appears to be making a return this Halloween in a variant called Shadow Royale. No other information other than that the infected and spiders that popped out of the loot bins will be making a regular appearance in this mode. So personally, I'm super hyped that a more evolved version of the Shadowfall that we got last year should be making a return this Halloween. So how Shadowfall worked last time it was in Apex Legends, um, you dropped into what is a Dark King's Canyon, but then the first people to die they would be turned into shadow people and once there was like 10 people left then you would all try to work together to make it to the drop ship. The shadow people would try to stop you from actually escaping in the drop ship but then the main issue came into play when uh, people would get turned into shadow people and because most of the good challenges that people had to complete were only with normal people once they get turned into shadow people they would actually quit playing. I do like this concept of this kind of infected survival battle royale but I'm guessing this is the reason because when people get killed you know they leave that's why apex legends is the way it is and not an infected kind of battle royale also something else that we can expect in the halloween event of this year is returning halloween skins from last year unfortunately i don't have any real information on skins that might be new to this next halloween event but guys there were some pretty cool skins in the last year's events like we had last laugh for caustic that you know crazy killer clown skin for caustic that's always been one of my favorite skins so i really hope that skin and a couple of other really cool ones such as Mirage Old Town. That one was also pretty cool that came in the Halloween event. I'm sorry to the people that don't want the Halloween skins to return, but given that these were event skins, they will normally bring back event skins, but Battle Pass skins, they normally don't bring back those, and I believe Respawn has even confirmed that they will never bring back a Battle Pass skin. Now my peeps, we're moving on to some news about them dirty, dirty cheaters, man. So if you've been playing a lot of ranked in Apex lately or been watching a lot of that high tier ranked gameplay on YouTube, uh, there's a good chance you've seen people using this exploit where you can go underneath the map to actually make into the final circle and sometimes even get the dub without even having to get a kill. So Respawn has approached this situation in a couple of different ways. Um, They actually twice rolled out patches where they put death triggers under the map to where if you go underneath the map and walk over certain places, I don't know if it's the entirety of under the map or in just certain spots, but you would actually die if you touch these places. So anyways, a couple days back, this guy named Con Connor Ford, he's a member of the Respawn security team. He actually put out this tweet on the Apex Legends official Twitter. To those who exploited going under the map for easy wins, and PS4 players who exploited an issue to rejoin ranked matches after dying to get higher placement and free RP, justice was served today. GG's. So that's right people, these exploiters that were making Apex Legends ranked look like some silly little joke that anybody could take first place in. This went on for almost an entire month in Season of Apex Legends. So if you're looking to get a bunch of free dubs, make ranked an absolute joke, put zero effort into this game, and beat out a bunch of people who absolutely grind the heck out of Apex. In this occasion, if you would have went for it, you could have got away with it for about an entire month and then received only a one-week ban. It's pretty unfortunate that this exploit survived this long. Um, I realize that the team is super busy, maybe they genuinely did not have time to fix it, but regardless, that kind of stinks that was in this game for that long. If I played ranked myself, I'd probably be a little bit more upset about it. So my people, anyways, moving on to the Steam Switch crossplay and aftermarket news. For the longest time, it's been rumored and slightly confirmed in a way that Steam Switch and crossplay should all be coming at once. Also, the aftermarket, it's about time for the aftermarket to come right about the middle of the season. So given that all of these things are about ready to be put into Apex Legends, we can pretty well infer that all of these things should come at once. It was previously leaked that 
all of these things were being planned to be entered into Apex at about September 15th, but that never happened. It was actually confirmed by EA support that Nintendo Switch support for Apex Legends was delayed. We do not know why this was delayed, but we know that for some reason they're having some problem getting Apex Legends Nintendo Switch compatible, so the whole nature of them quickly adding in this September soiree is a clear sign that there were development problems and that this is just filler content to make sure that Apex Legends does well enough this month to, you know, carry it on to the next. There was an October 6th date leaked before. This was only, like, store data, but it seems like we have some better evidence this time that the next plan date for Respawn to add in the aftermarket Switch and crossplay should be October 13th. Chances are you've seen it talked about about what skins are coming to the aftermarket. If you haven't seen that yet, I recommend you go check out my last news video on the channel, but I actually know of two new skins that we didn't know about before that's coming to the aftermarket. So two of these are going to be the Nightbreaker for the Longbow and then the Magnum Opus for the R99. I'm going to move on again and this time we're going to go over to Reddit and I found something pretty interesting that a Respawn developer said. So the Season 6 patch notes, they actually said that they buffed the Spitfire, but some people weren't too sure on what the buffs actually affected with the Spitfire. So anyways on Reddit, this developer was just clearing up things about what actually happened with the buff to the Spitfire. It's hard to give numbers on these sort of buffs because the numbers don't really mean anything if you don't understand the systems. It was just a reduction in the multipliers for the vertical and horizontal kick, but not any adjustment to the pattern itself. The horizontal recoil was buffed a little more than the vertical. The high mag size with worse TTK is a combo that is better for non-high skill players, and horizontal recoil is the hardest to control, so it made sense to me to improve it on that axis. So some players were actually saying that it seemed that the Spitfire actually got a little bit of a handling improvement, but according to this, all that was really buffed with the Spitfire was a little bit of vertical recoil, and there was a larger horizontal recoil reduction than the vertical. And also towards the bottom of this, he was explaining why they even messed with the Spitfire in the first place, and basically, a weapon like the Spitfire with its higher mag capacity is going to be better for low skill players that have bad aim, so you know, they're going to have more bullets in the mag to kill people, which is good for them, but then at the same time, horizontal recoils is going to more negatively affect the non-high skill players, so it made sense to take away some of that horizontal recoil. I hope that made sense. So moving on to some news about the loot pool and the current LTM as I'm recording this commentary, Armed and Dangerous. So they brought back Armed and Dangerous people. Yes, you know this again. They brought back Armed and Dangerous again, and to me, it's kind of boring. But what made it slightly less boring right away is when they added it back, they accidentally left in Energy Mags and the Volt SMG. So, you know, given that this is Armed and Dangerous and it's supposed to be shotguns and snipers only, you know, that's what Armed and Dangerous is all about. Naturally, Respawn made some changes and the Apex Legends official Twitter tweeted this. Morning Legends, as an FYI, we've adjusted the loot pool in Armed and Dangerous, removing the Volt and Energy Mags. We've also re-added the Mobile Respawn Beacon. Give it a shot. So, yeah, my people, um, this time around, Armed and Dangerous is feeling even less fresh than it was last time it was recycled. Now it's feeling even more boring. Um, I'm still glad they actually removed the Volt SMG. I don't know how the Volt SMG accidentally got into the shotguns and sniper only mode. So my people moving on to some more news and this actually comes from Reddit once again. A user discovered the Hammond's robotic symbol accidentally placed at the top of a space elevator when it wasn't supposed to appear in game. So normally these Hammond robotic symbols are added into World's Edge to signal a future map change coming. So randomly, or maybe less randomly, at one of the developer streams, we actually had this UFO in frame for just a second. We had no clue about this UFO, but all of a sudden it appeared in King's Canyon. I'm not gonna lie, on the channel, we previously talked about the possibility of this UFO returning last season in the same place that we saw it on the dev stream. But now there is some talk that would make a lot of sense to have this UFO at the top of the space elevator. My people, how cool do you think the possibility is of riding up to the top of the space elevator to loot a UFO. Guys, I don't know about you, but Skyhook to me, it's a super cool place on World's Edge. There's a bunch of pretty cool loot there normally, but the reason I don't normally land there is just because a lot of times, a lot of squads don't land there. It's super big and you end up running all the way to the circle on the other side of World's Edge. But if they add in the space elevator and bring a little bit more traffic and I mean just fun to this side of the map, I think it would be a little bit more worthwhile to actually land at Skyhook. There's 
there's a chance that this UFO that we saw in the developer stream and this glitched symbol on top of Skyhook are two completely unrelated things, but my people, it seems like there's a decent possibility of this. So people, I really hope you enjoyed this banger news video, or maybe it wasn't too banger, but anyways, I hope you leave a like, and if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, click that subscribe button below the video. You can always unsubscribe if you decide you do not like my content. So anyways, people, that'll be about it for me, the Alarmix, and I hope to see you in another video.